Well, colleagues, the next item of business is a statement by Hamza Youssef uh, on Murray Maternity Services. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement. Therefore, there should be no uh, interventions or interruptions. And I call on the Cabinet Secretary for in 10 minutes, please. Thank you, uh, Deputy Planning Officer. I'm committed to coming back to this chamber to provide an update on Murray Maternity Services, and I'm pleased to be able to do that here today. I intend to set out the progress that has been made to date. My initial response, and crucially, what the next key milestones will be. But before I do this, it's important for me to reiterate this government's absolute commitment to the delivery of a consultant-led maternity service in Dr Gray's Hospital. While Model 4 will deliver improvements for families in Murray, it is Model 6 which very firmly remains the destination. Members will be aware I started this, progress, uh, this process in December last year when I was considering the report of the independent review into Murray Maternity Services. I then proceeded to meet and engage with senior teams and boards, with clinicians, with local uh, community, uh, local community campaign groups uh, and indeed elected members from right across the political spectrum. This was important to do and it helped me to come to my final decision, which I announced in this chamber in March. This was to progress with Model 6, a full consultant-led maternity unit at Dr Gray's, with Model 4, a networked maternity model linked primarily with Regmore as part of the development towards that final destination. I also announced in line with the recommendations of the independent review that I would bring some level of independent assurance to this process. And I was delighted to announce in July that Professor Linda de Castiker would lead this work. Since then, Professor de Castiker has identified further clinical support and expertise to work with her to provide this external assurance. The team working with Linda includes representatives from relevant specialities such as paediatrics, anaesthetics, uh, anaesthetics sorry, obstetrics uh, and midwifery. This external panel will be a sounding board and a critical friend to both NHS Grampian and NHS Highland. And crucially, they will provide assurance and reassurance to the community and uh, to me here in government. This has already begun through meetings and email exchanges providing me with a further level of scrutiny and advice on progress and plans. Presenting officer members are aware of the NHS Grampian and NHS Highland draft joint plan submitted to me on the 1st of July. I welcome this plan, but at the time I was expecting further information before giving my response to it. The Model 4 plan is an important step in the journey towards Model 6, and I was pleased to see the ambitious timescales within it. What I can say here today is that before giving approval to Model 4 plans, I am very clear that further work is required. And there are elements to be worked through locally and nationally to deliver for families in Murray. At a local level, clinical teams in Highland and Grampian need to develop the safe pathways of care to bring reassurance to both the women involved and in Murray and, of course, to clinicians too. At a national and local level, there is work to be done to address the ongoing challenges of recruitment. I have asked both Highland and Grampian to share the recruitment plans to meet the 2023 deadline in the Model 4 plan. There are some key elements in the Model 4 plan I wish to draw the Chamber's attention to. Firstly, the intention for NHS Grampian to introduce increased obstetric antenatal care to Dr Gray's is welcome. It could result in at least 1,000 antenatal appointments a year delivered in Dr Gray's, therefore reducing the amount of travel for pregnant women. Uh, the other element I want to highlight today is planned caesarean sections. This is not included, as we know, in the Model 4 plan due to its dependency on other services and skilled staff being available. I expect planned caesarean births in Dr Gray's to be covered as part of that Model 6 plan, which I am expecting at the end of this year, uh, and ambitious progress to be made to deliver uh, that ambition. I will ask uh, Linda de Castiker and her external assurance panel to look at this issue in further detail. Presiding officer, we should view the interactions between Model 4 and Model 6 as, as, as essentially a continuum. Uh, we will not wake up one day and suddenly switch from Model 4 to Model 6. I expect Model 6 to be phased in over time. I am clear that elective sections should be given priority within that phasing process. Concerns have been raised with me by local campaign groups and indeed by clinicians with regards to the projected numbers 
in the NHS Highland draft business case uh, for women giving birth in Ragmore. I have asked the External Assurance Panel, which I have just spoken about, to take this forward uh, and investigate with boards and indeed with clinicians at pace. The ambition is to achieve choice for women living in Murray, the choice to birth in Ragmore if they wish to go there and where clinically appropriate. Of course, I understand there are concerns. There are concerns that progress is not being made quickly enough and concerns that clinicians do not feel the changes proposed are safe. I hear these concerns and I do take them uh, very, very seriously indeed. Uh, I commend the steps NHS Highland are taking to engage with the clinical teams to identify and address those concerns. This takes time and I have always been clear that change will not happen overnight. We must work with clinicians in Grampian and, of course, in Highland. And where there are legitimate concerns, these must absolutely be addressed. I understand the priority for women in Murray is that they have access as soon as possible to the widest range of maternity services that they can safely and realistically be delivered as close to home as possible. The independent review of maternity services in Murray proposed, and I agree with this proposal, that the first step in achieving this is to implement a network maternity model linked mainly to Ragmore. I have already announced funding of £5 million to support improvements in Ragmore. To be clear, when I visited Ragmore earlier this year, I saw for myself investment was much needed. The investment in Ragmore was not contingent on taking women from Murray. However, uh, improved maternity services at Ragmore, of course, will benefit all women uh, who give birth there. The redevelopment in Ragmore is key to improving the environment for both women giving birth and clinicians who work there. I know there are doubts around Model 4. I've heard them from clinicians, I've heard them from uh, community members uh, and campaign groups too. However, the real prize from implementing Model 4 will be opening up scope for more pre- and post-birth appointments at Dr Gray's and enabling more women to have their labour and birth in a hospital closer to where they live. This will be delivered by having the clarity of a safe Model 4 as an interim solution with robust pathways of care, providing care closer to home and increased choice of place of birth. Women who need obstetric lead care, led care will be able to have the choice of Ragmore or Aberdeen for the birth of their baby until consultant-led services are returned to Dr Gray's. It is critical that we continue to have a parallel focus on implementation of Model 4 as the final destination. NHS care should not be about board boundaries. It should be about working across boundaries to deliver the best care for all women who choose to birth there. Uh, this is key to a networked model. I was clear back in March that I expected plans for Model 4 and Model 6 to run concurrently. I know NHS Grampian has begun the process of planning what they require for Model 4 and to lay the foundations for Model 6. As I have already made clear, I view Model 4 as a continuum of Model, four, uh, model 6 as a continuum of Model 4, uh, an improvement journey with a focus on safety and led by clinicians. Oversight of this work is provided through the Chief Officers Group, jointly chaired by both NHS Grampian and Highland. I expect the Model 6 plan by the end of December. I expect to see evidence of collaborative working and joint plans from boards, for example, around the pathways of care. As part of this next phase of work, monthly meetings will take place between the board, between Professor Linda de Kastiker, uh, and my officials. Presiding officer, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, engagement and reinforce the importance of this, particularly ongoing engagement. I'm pleased to note that connections are already being made with the uh, external assurance lead, and this includes with community groups such as Keep Mum and uh, Murray and Banff from Maternity Voice Partnership. Their views have been instrumental to getting, in, to, get, to getting us to this point, and their challenge will help us to shape the way ahead. I have spoken to Keep Mum uh, just this week, and I have given them a cast iron guarantee that I remain absolutely committed uh, to Model 6, a return to consultant led midwifery unit at Dr. Gray's. Uh, and finally, Presiding Officer, I would like to just outline what I see is happening over the next six months or so. In November, I expect to have initial advice from the external assurance panel on the NHS Highland business case and on the numbers uh, of women giving birth which I know is, uh, in Rigmore, which I know is causing uh, some concern. In December, I expect to meet with NHS Highland and Grampian to discuss my expectations for the Model 6 plan and its interaction with Model 4. I expect to receive the Model 6 plan by the end of December, and of course, I will keep Parliament updated in that regard. 
Um, for all of, or, or differences, I'm certain that everybody in this chamber wants to see women in Murray being able to give birth as close to home as possible, and we will endeavour to make that a reality and always ensure the priority is the safety of women and their unborn children. Uh, from January to February, I expect to have a response from the External Assurance pa Panel on the plans received, and this will be fed back to both Highland uh, and Grampian. Uh, Presiding officer, I hope this statement gives some level of assurance to members, to the clinicians, to community groups who have raised concerns. Work to return consultant-led maternity services to Dr Grace is progressing. Uh, yes, COVID-19 has undoubtedly impacted on delivery timescales. And yes, the context continues to be the most challenging time our NHS has ever faced uh, since its creations. But the chairs, the chief executives, the executive, the executive teams at NHS Grampian and Highland continue to assure me of their commitment to deliver both Model 4 and, crucially, the final destination, uh, Model 6. And again, I reiterate uh, my and this government's uh, absolute commitment, not just to Model 6, but to ensuring that we return that consultant-led midwifery care in Dr Gray's to ensure that as many women uh, in Murray can give birth as close to home as possible. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take uh, questions on the issues raised in his statement. We have slightly overrun, but I intend to protect the around 20 minutes uh, for questions, after which we will need to move on to the next item of business, as time is tight across the afternoon. It would be helpful if uh, members who wish to ask a question could press the request to speak buttons now as soon as possible. And I call firstly Douglas Ross. Thank you, Presiding Officer. <clears throat> I know it is customary in the Scottish Parliament to thank the Scottish Government for making a statement, but I just can't. I can't, on behalf of Murray mums and families, thank him for that statement, because I share their anger, disappointment and frustration that we are no further forward. Months after <clears throat> the Cabinet Secretary previously came to this chamber and said he would make this a priority. We are no further forward to restoring consultant-led maternity uh, services at Dr Gray's than we were over four years ago when we were told to put up with a temporary downgrade for just a year. In his previous statement to this chamber in, in December last year, the Health Secretary claimed he understood the urgency and the importance of the issue. But that statement he just read out does not understand the importance of this issue because we are still in the situation where there is nothing of comfort for Murray mums and Murray families in that statement because the agonising worry and concern about being transferred in labour, be that Inverness or Aberdeen, is still there and shows no signs of ending. Quite frankly, Model 4 is a red herring, and I am pleading with the Health Secretary to listen to local representatives, to listen to Keep Mum and other campaigners and scrap Model 4 and move directly to Model 6. And he shouldn't just listen to local people and local politicians, he should listen to the clinicians that wrote to him today. I am sorry, Presiding Officer, the Health Secretary overran. How long can we speak about this issue? Because we have been waiting for months for this statement, and I know people are watching this today to hear really crucial points put forward. Mr. And I'm just Ross, I what... have given you some latitude. I am giving you some latitude. So how long? I'm, ask, I'm asking you. You've got 90 seconds. You're Nine seconds. Two minutes. I'll give you two and a half minutes. Thank you. So, what does the health secretary say to the health clinicians who wrote to him, 22 from NHS Highland today, to say that Model 4 remains fundamentally flawed? They say Model 4 must therefore be rejected and the consultant-led service at Dr Gray's Hospital re-established as a matter of urgency. Will he do that? Will he say today Model 6 has to go forward? On elective caesareans, last December he said in this chamber there should be a rapid reintroduction of elective caesarean sections at Dr Gray's. Now we're hearing that's going to be part of Model 6. And also on Model 4, he's saying we should somehow celebrate that there's going to be more pre- and post-birth appointments at Dr Gray's. I've never had one concern raised with me by local women or families about pre- and post-birth appointments at Dr. Dr Gray's. They want to give birth at Dr Gray's, and there was nothing in this statement that would do that. OK, cabinet, se cabinet Secretary. On a point of order. Point of order, Douglas Ross. I wonder, Deputy Presiding Officer, if you will accept an emergency motion to ensure that a longer debate and discussion can be had on this issue. Um, 
you have made such a motion in the past. I accepted it in the past. I don't see the need to do so on this occasion. I gave you an additional time. You've used that additional time and more. I've already explained that we're tight for time across the afternoon, and I've called the Cabinet Secretary. Uh, if it helps, uh, I'm happy to commit to a meeting with Douglas Ross if he wants to discuss these issues in more detail, uh, given the limited time that we have this afternoon. I do take the concerns that clinicians uh, have expressed and written to me uh, today, as Douglas Ross rightly references. He probably knows I've met with those same clinicians when I travelled myself uh, to Ragmore. That is why I haven't stood up in this chamber and said that I am, in principle, giving agreement to Model 4 plans. It's why I will uh, come to his point. I understand he's speaking from a sedentary position. I will, I will come to his point about uh, potentially uh, his suggestion of scrapping Model 4. What, what I've asked Professor Linda de Castiger to do, who has a panel of a paediatrician, obstetrician, midwife, uh, a range of specialisms in this field, I've asked her to engage with those clinicians, particularly around that concern between the, 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 what seems to be a gulf between the numbers that clinicians are suggesting will be giving birth in Ragmore versus uh, the numbers in the draft business plan by NHS Highlands. In terms of his uh, uh, concern around uh, scrapping Model 4, the suggestion of scrapping uh, Model 4, uh, if I did that and if I do that, then we will not have those additional, that additional prenatal and antenatal care at Dr Gray's and the time scales that are being suggested by Grampian and Highland. But also what we wouldn't have is the ability for Murray mothers to be able to give birth closer, or many Murray mothers uh, to be able to give other Murray mothers. If Douglas Ross just listens, I, I, mean, I promise him I will meet with him if he wishes after this, as opposed to him shouting from a sedentary position. Uh, what it will allow more Murray mothers to do is give birth closer uh, to home uh, in Ragmore in the intervening period as we get Model 6 up and running. Because I'm certain Douglas Ross um, appreciates, I, ho I hope he appreciates the reality that take, getting Model 6 up and running, which I'm committed to, give a cast iron guarantee that we want to get there, is going to take time. And he's shouting again from a sedentary uh, position when, he, as if he listened to my statement, he would have heard that I said the joint plan uh, for Model 6 is due to me at the end of December. And I plan to give an update uh, to Parliament then. So I'm more than happy, again, uh, given uh, Douglas Ross uh, continues to shout from its sedentary position, if he wishes to raise these issues with me directly, uh, given the lack of time or, or, or the constraints of time in this chamber, I'm happy to meet with him separately if he wishes. Thank you, Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for prior sight of the statement. My constituents in Murray are extremely concerned that Model 4 is unsafe and it is at best a distraction from delivering Model 6, and at worst it could become the permanent solution. These concerns are backed up by the clinicians in Ragmore Hospital, who tell us that the service in Ragmore is currently unsafe and can't take an additional 190 patients, far less the 650 to 900. They predict, and the gulf be of be in that, those numbers is because the government's estimation is based on UK-wide figures, not on remote rural figures which demand a more risk-averse approach given the distances that patients will have to travel in an emergency. Cabinet Secretary is saying he hears those concerns, but he really hasn't in this statement given any indication as to how they will be resolved. He will have a plan at the end of December, but can I ask for the detail of how, and more importantly, when Model 6 will be delivered, not just the plan? Cabinet Secretary. So, so I, I, mean, I can't tell you when Model 6 will be delivered because obviously I have to wait for the detail of the plan that comes to me in December. Then I'm happy to update Parliament around how long Model 6 will take. I, like everybody, if I could have Model 6 in place uh, today, uh, yesterday, I would have done that. And we would have done that because I have an absolute commitment to return a consultant led maternity care to Dr. Gray's. No ifs, no buts, no maybes, no possibilities. And that is the final destination. What we're doing is working back from that final destination. And what I would say, and I should have said this in reference to Douglas Ross's question, yes, COVID will impact uh, delivery timescales. I, I can't get away from that. In fact, since the independent review was published in December last year, um, of course, we had the Omicron wave, we've had the BA2, uh, BA2 wave, the BA4-5 wave. Uh, so there will be impacts, but I promise that, that there is no shortage of, uh, certainly for me, pace or urgency to get Model 6 delivered. In terms of um, uh, Rhoda Grant's question, uh, I, I'm happy to reiterate what I said in my statement, that I acknowledge the concerns that are there from clinicians. I don't dismiss them by any stretch of the imagination. And that's why I've asked Professor Linda de Castiger, who's leading the external assurance piece of work, to report back to me next month. And I think I said that in my statement. Report back to me next month with her initial advice, her initial, I hope, assurance 
uh, uh, giving me assurance and reassurance around uh, those uh, concerns that have been raised by clinicians. And I'm happy, uh, I will respond back to clinicians uh, in, in very short order, but I'm happy once I get that piece of external advice uh, from the Decastiger to update members uh, who speak in the chamber today. Karen Adam to be followed by Edward Knight. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government how it will continue to keep the invaluable voices and lived experience of the women and families of Murray central to its decision making going forward. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I, I can be brief in saying that, that that will absolutely be part of the engagement going forward, not just from me. So I met with Keep Mum uh, yesterday, I met with other groups like uh, uh, ba uh, Murray and uh, uh, Banff uh, MVP. Uh, as well, I have met with a number of local elected members, and uh, I will continue to do that. Uh, but I will say it is not just about my engagement, although I will, as I say, uh, 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 certainly pledge to continue that engagement. Uh, I have asked that the external assurance lead uh, continues those conversations, but also my expectation, absolute expectation, is that the Health Board also continues to engage uh, with those local campaign groups too. So, so they will be absolutely central to this process, however long it may take. Edward Mountain to be followed by Audrey Nicholl. Thanks, Presiding Officer. I've met twice with the maternity team at Regmore, and I listened to them. I actually really listened to them, Cabinet Secretary, and they're worried about the safety of mothers and baby, babies. Cabinet Secretary, the £5 million promised to Regmore will rectify some of the 15 years of underinvestment, but it won't even buy one extra bed space. The cost for providing extra beds and additional staff for Murray mums might be double that or even more. Will the Scottish Government guarantee to provide whatever funds are required and get staff in place before, and I mean before, Cabinet Secretary, approving a move to option four? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I say I also listen and hear the concerns of clinicians. Um, and I'm, again, I'm noticing from the Conservatives, they're shouting often from a sedentary position. If they want to have further meetings, I'm more than happy uh, to do so. But I think we should treat this issue uh, with the seriousness and the respect it deserves. Now, what I would say, if if, if Edward Mountain had read the NHS Highland draft business plan, uh, he would have seen there an important and crucial line uh, that says it is understood that further investment will be required for an alongside maternity unit or Inverness-based community midwifery unit, which will require additional capital investment. Uh, 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 presiding officer, I, I can only make progress in this statement if the Conservatives don't barrack uh, from a sedentary position. But if he lets me read what that report says, it says which will require additional capital investment along with revenue which will be needed to be encompassed within our capital, current capital allocation. So, of course, we will continue to work with NHS Island around uh, the revenue and capital uh, that is uh, required. But that has been acknowledged already uh, if Mr Mountain uh, goes back and looks at the draft business plan. Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Carol Mochen. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how NHS Grampian aims to cultivate a positive and supportive workplace culture at Dr Gray's and its other sites. Cabinet Secretary. Well, that is, is crucially important. Look, we are not going to make progress uh, to uh, that final destination of Model 6 unless we take staff with us, unless we take the clinicians as well as, of course, the local community uh, alongside us. And, and they are, NHS Grampian are prioritising engagement with staff and have undertaken detailed work to understand how colleagues are currently exper experiencing uh, NHS Grampian. It has a very active culture collaborative group, including colleagues from Dr Gray's, to promote best practice in developing a positive workplace uh, culture. In addition, I'm being, I've been told and given assurances that there's extensive staff engagement at Dr Gray's Hospital right now to co-produce the new strategic intent for Dr Gray's, including development of the maternity services that have been discussed today. Carol Mochen to be followed by Fergus Ewing. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Women in Murray are being let down by a lack of services close to home, but they're also being let down by the government's sheer inability to properly value our NHS workforce and fill vacancies across the country, particularly in rural communities. It is clear that Scotland needs a women's health champion to lead and push on issues such as these. The First Minister told the Chamber in June that the appointment would be made in the summer. 
The Women's Health Minister told me in early September that the appointment process was almost complete. Can the Cabinet Secretary finally tell the Chamber when Scotland will have a women's health champion and show women in Murray and across Scotland through action rather than words that the Government is actually listening and taking their concerns seriously? Cabinet Secretary. Well, look, can, can I um, disagree with Karen Walker, who I respect very much, um, slightly uh, uh, and actually quite vigorously on this point, that uh, we don't value the NHS workforce. We do value the NHS workforce, and we don't just uh, talk the talk and that. We put our money where our mouth is, and that is seen by the latest payoff for uh, the final pay offer that we've put on the table for NHS staff, which is almost half a billion pounds, ensuring, of course, that NHS Scotland staff remain the best paid uh, compared to anywhere else uh, in the UK. And I hope that offer uh, is accepted by a respect that trade unions uh, will go through their democratic processes uh, in that respect. Uh, in terms of uh, the Women's Health Champion, um, yes, uh, she's right, it was due to be uh, announced uh, in summer, but it's so important that we get the right person for uh, the role, and therefore, uh, due to a variety of factors, as Karen Mockin has outlined, there has been a delay. Uh, but we'll be looking to make that announcement about Women's Health Champion imminently. Fergus Ewing to be followed by Ariane Burgess. Uh, also, the, the consultants and staff at the maternity units in Rig Moore's concerns are essentially that the business case prepared by NHS Highland Management fails to address very obvious issues, such as underestimating the number of patients that would come from Murray, such as making no provision for decant uh, in the proposed refurbishment of the existing maternity unit. Um, it's surprising, Cabinet Secretary, that issues of fact seem not to have been resolved, uh, and unfortunate to say the least. Therefore, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary Will uh, Linda de Kasker, in her work, meet with the consultants and staff, give enough time to them to listen extremely carefully to their side of the case? Because without that, I fear that it will not be possible to guarantee safety, which is something that you have said is a sine qua non of, of going ahead with Model 4. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, in short, yes, yes, Linda de Castiger will. That's why I've asked Linda de Castiger uh, to, to, to look at the concerns that have been raised uh, with me uh, in that open letter uh, from uh, clinicians. And it's why I have not come to this chamber to say that I give final approval to Model 4 plans. I couldn't do that in good conscience because concerns have been raised. And therefore, it's really important when those clinical concerns are raised that we ask other clinicians uh, as part of that external assurance process uh, to, to, to investigate those claims and come back and provide me with initial advice. And when I get that initial advice, uh, once I'm able to, 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 to analyse that and read through it uh, and give it some detailed consideration, I, of course, will, will, will ensure that Parliament continues to be updated. Ariane Burgess to be followed by Stephanie Gallagher. Thank you. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his statement. It's clear that considerable effort has been put into finding a workable solution to improve maternity care for women in Murray. But I'm aware that until Model 6 is up and running, women in Murray still have real and valid concerns about their care at such a crucial time in their lives. What support will be in place to help women make informed, independent choices about their birth plan, even though options may be limited until Model 6 is fully operational? Come and take so can I say from the offset, and, and where I've tended to agree with uh, almost every member of the Scottish Parliament here, is that, of course, uh, the situation that Murray women face at the moment is far from ideal. Uh, there's nobody in here, not from the government, uh, not from, I suspect, any political party here suggesting that we have an ideal situation and that, that we have the safest uh, situation um, that, that, that we would all want to see for our own families or for ourselves if uh, we are able to, 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 to give birth. Um, but I, I want to give an absolute assurance uh, that any, any model that we implement going forward, and I'm absolutely committed to Model 6 as the final destination, will have to be done safely. Uh, you know, we, the, the, the issue about C-sections was referenced already uh, to me. The reasons why we haven't included C-sections within Model 4 is because we are told by clinicians that that would be unsafe to do so, because even a, a so-called low-risk uh, elective section could turn into a high-risk one very quickly and, and therefore you have to have the appropriate facilities if somebody uh, hemorrhages uh, and you need to give a blood transfusion, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So um, I, I want to give an absolute assurance to, to Ariane uh, Burgess, if I can, that uh, certainly for any woman who accesses information, support and care at Dr Gray's, certainly the feedback I get is very, very positive in terms of the inf information they're given, the informed choices that, are, that, that they're then able to make. 
but b in no doubt whatsoever there's nobody in the government myself of course included who thinks that the situation for women in murray currently uh, is is ideal far from it okay we've got just over two minutes and three colleagues who still want to ask questions so i'm going to have to ask the, for the questions and also the answers to be more brief uh, stephanie callahan to be followed by jimmy helper johnson to ask the Scottish Government how NHS Grampian will adopt robust clinical governance arrangements within the maternity service that fulfil the requirements of the clinical and care governance framework. Well, NHS uh, Grampian, they do have a clinical uh, governance committee in place, and its role is to oversee quality and clinical governance for the board, ensure that quality standards uh, are being set, that they're being met, and of course continually improved in appropriate areas uh, of clinical activity and, and, and that effective arrangements for supporting, monitoring and reporting on quality and clinical government, uh, governance uh, are in place right across the NHS Grampian. Jamie Hawker Johnston to be followed by Gillian Martin. Thank you. Families in Murray's, Murray have at least received an independent review into maternity services. And this is something that patients in Caithness have been calling for in their area since 2016 res in response to similarly un unacceptable circumstances that have prevailed there. So can the Cabinet Secretary outline whether an independent review into maternity services in Caithness will be commissioned by the Government? And if not, why not? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure Mr Halker Johnson is well aware that I met with um, the local Ca Ca Cambrian group chat. Uh, in Keith Ness, and in fairness, I think uh, we both found the meeting uh, a very constructive one. In fact, we've already started some conversations around how we can make improvements uh, to uh, the services provided for women and their families in Keith Ness. In response to his direct question, he'll know that the Best Start uh, North review was paused due, due to the pandemic. That encompassed a number of health boards in the North uh, Highlands and indeed. Uh, including uh, NHS Orkney too in that conversation uh, and that work is now resumed and that will include of course looking at the issue around maternity in Caithness. And Gillian Martin. Officer, in the North East we have been struggling with uh, staff vacancies for a considerable time so my question is about targeted support for increased recruitment and retention for medical staff to Murray and across Grampian to ensure a robust service, particularly in midwifery and obstetrics as we move to the model sex. It's a concern that I have that we just don't have these people in place even at the moment. So as that enhanced provision has been looked at, what are we doing to target support? As briefly as possible, Cabinet Secretary. I can thank Gillian Martin. This issue was also raised with me by our colleague Richard Lockhead, uh, who is unable to be here because he is at uh, an STUC meeting with the First Minister um, yesterday. And, and the assurance I gave to him and I give to Gillian Martin uh, today is that I recognise that national and local actions, of course, will be needed to address those local staffing challenges. And as I have asked both Highland and Grampian to share the recruitment plans to meet the 2023 deadline in the Model 4 plan. So uh, there is extensive work underway. I am happy to write in more detail to, to Gillian Martin, given the time constraints, about what is going on, what is happening in relation to recruitment. Um, but it is going to be a crucial part uh, of those Model 4 plans and, of course, crucially part of those Model 6 plans in the future too. Thank you. That concludes this item of business. There will be a brief pause to allow the front benches to change before we move to the next item of business.